Hak Sameach, everyone. So as I was thinking about Shavuot, and for those of you who were there last night, we had a really lovely night of study. We talked about what is it that we experienced at Sinai. What did we hear when the mountains trembled and God gave us Torah and we said in the collective voice, Na'asev Nishma, we will do it and we will spend our lives trying to understand it. Now I think it's interesting because I've never heard any group of Jewish people all agree and say things at the same time with full, you know, passion and, and commitment, but this is the time. And if there was ever going to be a time, that would be the time. So we said we will spend our lives seeking to understand Torah. And as I was thinking about preparing for Shavuot and the holiday and receiving Torah, the thing that just kept coming to my mind this year um, is counting. There have been a lot of numbers that we've been thinking about recently. We've been counting the days of the Omer. At starting at Second Seder, we count down the 50 days until Shavuot, until this day when we receive Torah. We count the days of Passover. We count the days leading up to our high holidays. We give ourselves the month of Elul to prepare. We continually count in the Jewish calendar. We count the Ten Commandments. Now, I always give my B'nai Mitzvah students a pop quiz to ask them how many commandments are in Torah. And I would say 50-50 get about, get, get, get close. There are 613 commandments in Torah. We spend time counting those commandments. We enumerate the Ten Commandments, and in just a moment, Cantor is going to read them for us. And numbers go beyond, though, Torah. There are numbers that are important to us in life. And on festival days like Shavuot, we also count the days of Yisker. And we count the time that it's been since the loved ones that we hold in our hearts have been with us. And we count those years and we count those days. And that has been even more acute for me in the last few weeks as we've counted days in hospital in my family and we've counted days of Shiva and we've counted days towards Shloshim and then we eventually count days towards the first year. But all of those days and all of those weeks for all of us have meaning. The numbers hold meaning for all of us. And for those of us who are here to remember somebody this morning, we count those times. And we count the times that they were with us. And we hold those memories in our hearts because we need that counting. We need to remember all of those moments. We need to remember the birthdays and the anniversaries and the every ordinary, everyday ordinary moments. And it's no coincidence that on Shavuot, we also read, and we'll be reading from Torah in this next week as the Jewish people, Parshat Naso, which, start, which starts with a census, counting the people. Why do we count people? Because we have to count community. And that's something that we all need in those moments when we're saying Yizkor and that we're remembering people. The counting all comes together because we count the days without somebody, but we also count all of the people who are around us every day as we go through these moments, and we need that community. And community are the people that stand with us when we need them, and they count with us when we need it, and they help us to remember the numbers, and they help us to count the numbers going forward too. So as we think about what it means to hear God, in the moment of Sinai, giving us the commandments and enumerating and counting with us, we think about the days that they traveled from Egypt to re re be at this moment of Sinai, to hear God give us the commandments. And as we studied last night, there's conflicting texts. Rabbi Appel shared with us. There's conflicting texts. Some of them say that there was more noise than you could ever imagine at Sinai with trumpets and horns and thunder and lightning and everything you could possibly have to get the attention of the people to say, hey, pay attention. I'm going to give you these commandments and you're going to listen. And then there are texts that say it was completely quiet and there was nothing. And as we were about to say, hear the Ten Commandments spoken, 
from God, there was utter silence. And so as we count, sometimes we need the thunder and the lightning. Sometimes we need the gravitas. Sometimes we count with such excitement and such grandeur that we need the thunder and the lightning and all of the the things to make it the moments that we need. But sometimes when we count, we also need the quiet. And sometimes we need the internalized, just peaceful comfort of knowing what's going to come and that we are going to hear God's voice, but we're going to hear it when it is quiet. And so as in a moment when Cantor reads the Ten Commandments, I'm going to invite you to take a moment and hear what you need to hear. Hear the silence, but also hear the beauty of the, one, of the words of Torah. Hear what it means to do the blessing as a community in one voice, all together as we chant the blessing so that we may receive Torah. And as we do that, I'm going to share the words of a poem that I found um, particularly meaningful in the last little while. It's called The Sound of Hearing. Because sometimes we hear silence, but sometimes we hear what we need to hear, and sometimes it's loud, and sometimes it's not. So this is by the poet Alden Salaby. The Sound of Hearing. Let me hear the whisper of you, where faith meets doubt, where speaking surrenders to listening, where you are everything. Holy one, hear the sound of my hearing, a quiet yearning as my heart bends to you, and make my prayers one with yours. Hakasmeas.